Being a Rotarian is now even more rewarding. Rotary Global Rewards, our member benefit program, offers discounts you can use every day and helps Rotarians do what they do best. Give back. The good you do comes back to you. Rotary Global Rewards. Find out more at rotary.org slash myrotary. Welcome to the Rotary Club of Tulsa, where Tulsa's business leaders and community leaders come together to do great things here in Tulsa and around the world. Does anybody know what national holiday we're celebrating today? Slinky Day. Isn't that awesome? Who knew? Little known fact, an engineer actually invented the slinky back in 1940. A naval engineer, oh, that probably doesn't sound right. A Navy engineer, an engineer of the Navy, not an engineer of the naval. So, yeah, sorry. Yeah, a Navy engineer invented the slinky. Must have been like really bored one day, but that's what he came up with, so. Let's take a minute to uh, greet those standing around you. Okay, we've got a great program today. We're uh, happy to have Kathy in the house. We're kind of extending our discussion on education in Tulsa after having Reverend Owens here last week, so it's going to be another great program. Uh, Past President Bob Sade is going to lead us in our invocation. Sidney Marcellus is going to lead us in song and pledge. And then uh, past, past President Ed Monette's leading us in visit. they got two past presidents up here. Someone getting worried about my uh, performance maybe? Or? Okay, Bob? Join me please in prayer. Heavenly Father, for all of the many blessings we have received, we give thanks. For all of the wrongs we have committed, we ask forgiveness. For all that needs to be done to make our world a better place, we seek guidance. And especially now, at this important time in the lives of those suffering from the devastation of the recent storms, we pray that they will have the strength and help needed to return to their homes and normal lives as soon as possible. Amen. Join me in singing God Bless America. I'd like to welcome everybody to the Rotary Club of Tulsa, where we learn about slinkies and things like that. So let's, uh, thanks a lot, Mike. That was just, that was great. Okay, um, I'd like to welcome all our visitors, and uh, as is our custom, I will introduce uh, your Rotary host, and if you and your host would stand briefly when I call your name and sit right back down, uh, we will point at you and look at you, and then we will all uh, welcome you together at the end. So... We have Rotarian Tony Oliva has brought Christy Immig. Rotarian Justin Jones has brought his wife, Shelly. Robert Shields is the guest of Rotarian Danny Stockstill. Jason Krause is here with Joel Matson. Michael Hopper is the guest of Michael Hairston. Lynette Potter has brought Cindy Salter. Brian Bovard has three guests from Camp Lockridge's outdoor classroom. We have Reese Hundley, 
Kim Watson and Cheryl Cheadle. And Mark Graham has Allison Anatoly. Anthony. Okay. I didn't get to ask you how to pronounce that uh, wonderful hand penmanship. Thank you. And then uh, Mehdi Kesri has brought Mehdi Kesri. Okay. Let's all give them a warm round of applause. We have a visiting Rotarian that has a guest. The guest is Ryan Flood, and the visiting Rotarian from Owasso is Andy Coleman. Hi, Andy. Thank you all, and please come back. Thank you, Bob, Sydney, and Ed. Appreciate you both, all three of you. So welcome, visitors. Yeah, if you're looking for a place to get plugged into the community, uh, make some new friends, and uh, actually learn some good management skills and speaking skills, this is the place to be. So uh, we hope you'll consider joining us. We hope you feel welcome and consider joining us. Now, please join me in uh, recognizing this week's meeting sponsor, Greg Keck with uh, Jackie Cooper Imports. Thank you, Greg. Are you here? And then uh, today's uh, committee or volunteers helping us out and making sure our, our meetings run smoothly in spite of who's up at the podium here. Uh, please join me in thanking today's Rotarians in service. Okay, number of uh, announcements today again. Again, this club is like amazingly busy. Uh, but first, we want to extend our condolences to uh, Peter Jensen. Uh, Peter's mother passed away uh, recently. However, he shared with me and some good news also. They had a, a new baby born just four days before his mother passed away. So Peter's been on an emotional roller coaster. Peter, our hearts go out to you. We give you hugs. Uh, glad for the baby and sorry for your loss. But glad your mother got to got to know, know her grandchild. So please, there's cards on the table. Please uh, jot Peter and his family a note. And I've been getting a lot of questions. You know, uh, Hurricane Harvey's on everyone's mind, obviously. Uh, we actually have some guests at our house from Houston, some friends, of, a friend of Ginger's that came up. They have a, a four-year-old hurricane of their own named Fernando. <laughs> uh, that, they just didn't feel comfortable staying in Houston with, so they came up and they've been spending some time with us. And uh, <clears throat> fortunately, their house has not been impacted, but thousands and thousands of people have. So, you know, obviously our hearts go out to them. We've been inquiring in the Rotary world to see if Rotary's going to help out, and, and they are. Uh, what we've heard so far, and this is just this morning, this. I think the extent of the storm, I mean, it just keeps going on and on and on. It's like, you know, what, when do we get started? So uh, District 6200, which is actually over in Louisiana, uh, they have a, uh, a 501c3 foundation set up, and they are collecting funds. If you want to make a donation through Rotary, right now the best avenue is, is through District 6200 Foundation. And we'll get this information to you via email and in the newsletter next week. Um, and, and you can actually say in there in your, on your check when you make your donation if you want it to go to Louisiana or Texas. They're going to they're gonna spread the love over to, over to their neighbors in Texas. And there may be some other uh, districts. I know there's a district right there around the Houston area. We have not heard from them for obvious reasons yet. But there may be other opportunities that come along where we can reach out and help them. So... Uh, otherwise, right now, uh, the good old you know, Red Cross is, would, would be a good place to make a donation or even Salvation Army. So, so as I'm sure you are, keep, keep them in your thoughts and prayers. Uh, I know, I'm pretty sure everyone here probably knows someone that's been impacted. Okay, <clears throat> Club Assembly with uh, District Governor Judy Brigham, Brigham is coming up September 12th. Uh, we're meeting in the evening at uh, the 810 building here downtown from 5.30 to 7.30. And this is a chance for us to share with the district governor everything we're doing in this club. And if you have not been to a district assembly, I would really encourage you to come. 
because you will leave amazed at everything that's going on in this club. Uh, if, even if you've been, I would encourage you to come because there's so much going on uh, this year that you'll want to hear about. It's a great opportunity if you're new to the club to come uh, hear what each of the committees is doing and maybe that'll help you figure out where your passion is and where you want to get plugged in. So uh, great opportunity. Uh, and if, if that's not enough, we're actually going to serve food and drink. So we'll have, have food and drink there if that's, if that's what you're all about. So uh, we hope you'll join us. Again, September 12th, 810 building, 530 to 730. Our uh, Rotary Exchange student, inbound student, Carlo from Milan, Italy, uh, needs one more host family. We have three host families while he's here. We have two. Uh, we need one for that would start uh, like right after Thanksgiving and go into the first of March. So it's about a about a three and a half month period. Uh, it'd be a great opportunity to, uh, to introduce you or if you have children to introduce them to a different culture. Carlos. Carlo is a great kid. I've met him. He's going to be here possibly next week to speak with us. And uh, you'll fall in love with him. He's a, he's a great, great outgoing, has a great outgoing personality. So if you have some room in your house and uh, would like to host him for three months or so, uh, get with uh, either Jerry Stamper or Alicia Herrera and they'll, they'll get you hooked up. Okay, adopt a class. Remember our goal is $9,000 to, and, and, and the goal is to give each teacher two $100 gift cards so they can buy supplies for the classroom. And they need this money and we are close to our goal. So if you have not given because you intend to give and you're like me and you keep forgetting to give, uh, reach out to uh, write a check to the office and put uh, adopt a class on there. Uh, let's, let's see if we can reach that goal and really help those teachers out this year. So, so if that touches your heart, please, uh, please make a donation. Okay, so now Donna, Derek, and Angela, would you guys come up here, please? No, they don't want to, but you can, come on, come on. So, yeah. So, you know, we all have our own unique ways that we, we serve our club. And uh, most of us do it without any fanfare. We don't expect any thanks. We don't expect a pat on the back. Uh, we just do it because we love who we are and we love what we do. Donna, Derek, and Angela have been serving us meals every Wednesday, week after week, for years. And to me, that really represents a servant heart. You know, they, they don't, they're not members of this club. There's nothing really to gain for them to serve us, but they do it. They do it with smiles. They always have encouraging words, and we always appreciate that. And, uh, but they're saying goodbye now, so this is our, our, so we treated them to lunch. I assume we bought your lunch, hopefully. Uh, so this is their last day, and we just wanted to say thank you and present them with a, a card and a, and a gift card. So thank you for everything you've done for us, all of you. Hearts of Rotarians they have. Okay. Uh-oh, where's my... Whoa, my goodness. You're kidding me. Is that... Uh, we what, discussed this. It was going to be 70s day today, Mike, and why are you not dressed up? I am... Was that, the same, was that the same conversation we had about the 3D glasses? Was that during that same time period? Apparently it was. I just know that it was dark out, and wow. you were mumbling, yeah. and I just assumed we were going for it. Wow, dude. But, but you look good. Is that, so is that I what you're going to wear? I am profiling. 
Do what? I am styling and profiling. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Is this, uh, is this what you're wearing to the district assembly, maybe? Um, is there alcohol being served? Uh, absolutely. <laughs> absolutely. Probably best. Then. Okay. Yeah, okay. absolutely. Okay. okay, that's what, next week? Uh, two weeks, actually. Two weeks, okay. Yeah. Well, I can Don't forget myself. your 3D glasses. Yeah. Uh, you know. So did you, like, grow all that hair this past week? If I could, I would not be here because I'd be the richest man in the balding America. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> There's a lot of guys in here saying, I'm envious. Yeah, no doubt. Wow, that's nice. Well, we're about to get crazy, so let's just start our way, okay? Crazier, you Crazier. Mean. We don't, oh. What is this? Did I miss this? Well, that kind of goes back to the uh, 3D glasses. Is it? Okay. Yeah. Can you, can you, I was worried about your eyesight from last week. You couldn't see. So I'm wondering, can you read the chart there? I, I can. Can um, you? I don't, do not like Mike's advice. Yes. But that's Wow, very the good. Mic. It's coming back then. Good. I was much smarter when I had hair. <laughs> All right. So today, and I think this is actually wrong, about 40 years ago today, I don't know how many of you all know this, but... Bob Ross of uh, The Joys of Painting, he signed his agreement with PBS to bring us joy every week while painting. And Bob was just a fantastic guy. His sayings, we don't make mistakes here, just happy little accidents. So, <laughs> kind, of, kind of like Rotary, right? I wonder, if he knew, I wonder if he knew the engineer that invented the slinky. That's about the same I, time I don't period. know. I have no idea if he does or not. But let me get up here because everybody's twisting their necks and they really don't want to, to see this ugly thing. Wow, so. those are like real bell bottoms too, aren't they? Oh, I'm, I'm getting my funk on. That's nice. for sure. Yeah, you are. All right. Look, you can't even see my face. Isn't that credible? <laughs> I told him to try to get that down a little bit. Okay. All right, let's see here. We got some fines. My good friend, Tim Caldwell, happy birthday, Tim. He's got $100 for Adopt a Class, $100 for Camp Enterprise, and $100 for Club Foundation. I think I just nice. realized I can bring the mic to you. Very good. Thank you, Tim. All right. Knowing the flavor of Bob, you know, of course, he likes paint. So here Brenda is. It's her 56th birthday. She's done a wonderful job with her crown and her tiara up there with the different colors and fuchsias and all that's going on there. So she at least got a little bit into this whole thing. Happy birthday, Brenda. $56. It's all going to water wells. So that's very good. <laughs> Big, bad, beautiful Bob. Happy birthday, Bob. 200. He told me just a second ago, he goes, I'm not quite to 200. <laughs> so he says, make sure you clarify that to make sure those people out there don't give, look, give me that look. So anyway, but thank you, Bob, very much for your contribution. <laughs> and here is the last minute edition. I, th I don't think Matt really wanted his birthday to be divulged, but it is nonetheless. His wonderful wife, Becky, called in and said uh, he's 62 years old, that's their $62 that's going into the foundation. Is he here? Where's Matt? There he is, oh, hiding yeah. over there. And it just doesn't stop there, Matt, because you're a crazy <laughs> kind of guy. You lived through the 70s, right? Yeah, and you kept your hair. Good for you. <laughs> Mama sent in $200 just a few minutes ago. We got on the radio, we, you know, we put the notice out. Mom called in. She said she's doing $200 for adopt a class in your name. Nice. So very cool. Very nice. <laughs> Terry Heritage will bring you that six pack of beer, okay? All right. <laughs> so we can't keep just moving on. We've got to have a saying right here. Maybe in our world, there are lives of happy little trees over there, right? So whenever you're painting and you screw up and it doesn't look so good, just say it's a tree. <laughs> it's a tree, okay? <laughs> Trying to help you guys out. How many artists do we have in here? Any artists at all? <laughs> Catherine, you're not an artist? You look like an artist. <laughs> All right. Football tickets, it's time. All right. All right. We've got a winner for the OSU ticket. Sandra Mullins bid $350. So, Sandra, where are you? Hi, Sandra. I will get you the tickets right after. Thank you very much for that. And you'll be hanging out with Barbara and Tim Knoll, so you'll be going crazy there. They're going to get out of control, be ready to run on the 50-yard line. They've known to do that season opener every year. And then I've still got OU tickets. Now I know it's Labor Day weekend. I know everybody's got plans by the pool, by the lake, by the cooler. But we need some bidding on this. I cannot believe, I, I mean, it's not that bad of a game. They're, they're not going to kill them that bad, right? 
So let's put some hands up. Does anybody want to do $50, $75? Let's get this thing going. Come on. All right, John Raines, well, you waved at me, but I didn't hear a number. <laughs> so I'd go with 75. 50? No. 60? 70? $100. Oh my gosh. Does anybody even want to compete with that? $100? Come on, OU fans. Come on, show a little pride. $100. A little pride. Come on. Oh, Sandra. Nice. Sandra. Oh, wait. All right. What do we got back there? 120. 120. All right. We're nice. Anybody who's going beyond 120, 120 OU tickets. Baker wow. Mayfield will throw a touchdown pass, and he will run down to greet and hug the person that catches it. Guarantee it. <laughs> Wait, do I see another hand? Oh, there we go. Oh, my. How are you going to be two places at one time? You have people. She has she people. She has people. Wow. Wow. <laughs> my people will meet your people and get you the tickets if you bid highest. What is that? We're at 120. You want to go to the 3,000? <laughs> No? 130? 130. So poor John starts off at 100, then we go to 20, now we're down to 10, but that's okay. 130, anybody can go up another 10, 20, 50, 75? 150. 150, says John in your nice. face. This is getting angry. <laughs> angry tornadoes swirling about. You're good? 150? Good, good, good. Congratulations, Good John. Job. You are the proud owner of some OU football tickets. They will be over here, and I'll get these to you here in a little bit. Not bad for my first auction. Did I good. don't know. You did good. I don't think I'll quit my day job, though. Okay. So how do you comb that in the morning? I don't mean, ask. Okay. Don't ask. I can't even. I, can't I got all even, sorts of questions going through my mind. The worst part's right a shower. Now. You just see the clog. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that is pretty gross, isn't it? Okay. My photo of the week here, since we're going retro. The younger kids never have seen this before, but this is a payphone. And so who takes a picture of a payphone but our youth of America? So, <laughs> so anyway, Sarge picture of the week. All right. Appreciate y'all calling with fines and all that. Get a little crazy. Sometimes they do ask me to help segue to another area. We have coming up a very exciting month. Did you what? Okay. Very exciting month where we are going to start recruiting new members to Rotary, and Becky Fields and Cayenne is going to be able to tell us a little more about that. But I feel like we got to get the energy up in the room, don't you? I know you do, right? Right. All right. We need a little energy. And so, you know, if we're going to be showing some love, and you know, one last thing is we got to be a vehicle that says everyone can be a Rotarian. They just haven't been invited yet, right? right? So, Bob Ross is even on board, right? So I knew Bob Ross, he rocked out. You know, he's a Vietnam vet. He rocked out. So anyway, Miguel, hit it, baby. Bring it up. Can you guys hear that? Thank you for that. I'm glad we didn't have to do that dance, and you're probably glad too. So we are so excited to announce a membership drive for Rotary this year. And so why are we doing that? A couple of years ago, we started with a, a new strategic plan on what we need to be doing differently, more of, less of, in our Rotary Club. And we heard um, back from everyone in the club, plus people outside of the club, and we had some great feedback. And one of the things that we learned was that we do a lot of great things, but we actually need more of you to, do, to keep doing those great things. So one of our goals in our strategic plan is to increase membership by 5% by the end of this year. Moving out of town and different things like that, we have set a goal of 52 
new members this year. So that's hashtag 52 of you if you're posting on social media today. I know you guys all are. So anyway, as um, uh, Charles, Bob, I can't think of his name, as Bob <laughs> just introduced, uh, we are doing a membership drive and it's called Each One Bring One. So Kyan's going to tell you a little bit about it. All right, the dates are September 1st through September 30th. September 1st is Friday. Uh, our goal for the month of September is seven new membership applications and 100 guests in September. And I think you mentioned earlier that we average about 50 currently, so it's going to take a little bit of work for us to meet that 100 person or 100 guest in September goal. Um, there are some incentives. We know everybody loves the opportunity to potentially win something. So. Uh, applications submitted during the contest dates will have the $200 initiation fee waived, um, and the amount due will be $100 for foundation giving and $20 for a badge. There's some other incentives. So great. Yeah, that's very, oh, sorry. There you go. Um, so exciting to get to have that $200 membership waived, so whenever you're talking about it um, to your friends, it's just a great time to, to join and have a, a a little um, extra given. And so we also have incentives just for being a guest. So we want to recognize people who take time out of their schedule to come join us and just see what we're about. No pressure, but anyway, of course, we're going to have some, some fun um, things to give out. Phil Armstrong, who is a new owner of three Subway stores, which I want to make sure you guys all visit, he has um, generously donated some Subway gift cards to um, give out to our guests. And we have some other people. Kip Lycom has already been donating. donating. And so there are, are some really neat um, and just fun things that we'll be giving out during that time for our meeting guests. And then, of course, we're not going to forget about you, our faithful Rotarians. So weekly, if you have a guest, you'll also be um, getting some some prizes. We have some rotary swag fresh back from Atlanta from the International Conference, so that's exciting, as well as some other fun freebies and um, gift cards. Gas cards, of course, if you're picking some up, um, someone up, you have to have gas, so we're, we want to reward you with some gas cards, so that'll be in there. And then the most exciting thing is for all you competitors out there, and I know Sandra Mullins, Karagay Neal, Will Smith, you guys are already talking like you're going to fill the room and you're already filling the room. I think Karagay probably has set the record this year for how many guests she's brought. But anyway, so you guys have people to go up against here. But as um, for everyone that um, brings and sponsors a new member, so you bring guests, you get prizes. But if you sponsor a new member, um, your name will go into a prize um, drawing for a weekend for four donated by Lynette Potter to her condo at Shangri-La. So that'll be a fun thing. And we also have some other prizes coming in. And on that note, if you're a business and would like to donate something to give away uh, to our membership drive, we sure would appreciate it. Just let me know. And then finally, to make your life a little bit easier and help you be a vehicle to bring new Rotarians in, there's a little, sh little slips of paper on the table for you to start writing down uh, people who you think would enjoy coming to Rotary. So I would encourage you to snag one of those and start jotting down names. And then I think we're going to send out some information uh, on some ideas on how you could, could structure your invite to, to get them interested. Thank you, Becky and Cayenne. So everyone bring one, 100 visitors in four weeks. We can do that. There's, there's no doubt in my mind we can do that. And that'd be the most awesome part of this. If we just get people in here to see who we are and the great things we're doing, they're going to love us. So thank you. Participate, participate. Okay, Rotarian of the Day, Mr. Mark Graham. Mark joined our club in May of 2008, and he brings years of volunteer and executive leadership experience plus a passion for the Tulsa community to his role as president and CEO of the Tulsa Area United Way. He serves on the board of directors and jointly with the board chair represents the Tulsa Area United Way in our community, as we all know. Ironically, Mark's first community volunteer work was actually for the Tulsa Area United Way, following his graduation from college and relocating back to Tulsa. Now, prior to joining the Tulsa Area United Way as president and CEO, in 2007, Mark spent more than 35 years as an executive in the health insurance and banking industries here in Tulsa. Mark's a graduate of the University of Oklahoma. He's also graduated, a graduate of Leadership Oklahoma and Leadership Tulsa. 
and he's been recognized by the journal record as one of Oklahoma's most admired CEOs. Great tag. Mark, his wife Kirsten, and their golden doodle Tess <laughs> spend every free moment they have at their home in Santa Fe, New Mexico. Didn't know that. Good to know, though. Uh, while Tulsa is their first love, Santa Fe runs a close second. Please join me in welcoming to the podium Rotarian of the Day, Mark Graham. Thank you, President Mike. I need to do a clarification. My wife spends a lot more time in Santa Fe than, than I do. Um, it is, it's truly my pleasure to introduce Dr. Kathy Siebold, who is the Executive Director of Impact Tulsa. And I've known Kathy for a lot of years, and actually she was a member of the executive team at the Tulsa Area United Way, and I'm, I am a fan. So it's an honor for me to be able to make her introduction today. So a little bit about Kathy. Kathy holds a Doctorate of Education in Higher Education Leadership from Oklahoma State University. And anyone who knows Kathy knows that she's an advocate for quality education, for social improvements, and for collective impact. She has over 20 years experience as an educator, as an administrator, and a community organizer. And her work in our community includes being a nonprofit leader, a university professor, higher education, as well as public education administrator, and a K through eight classroom teacher. So on, a, on kind of a more personal note, Kathy is absolutely an avid world traveler. But I'll tell you, her travel is a little bit different than most of ours in that when she visits a country, she immerses herself into that country, not as kind of a sightseer, but as somebody who is experiencing their culture um, and a lot of that evolves around volunteering. So I asked Kathy just to rattle off a few of the countries that she's visited, and that list included uh, India and Peru, where she volunteered with higher education students from across the United States. It also included a doctoral cohort research study in higher education in Belize. And then her travels also included co-facilitating cultural exchange tours in nine different countries with OU, Tulsa students and faculty and staff. So in total, she's visited 25 countries. And then I'll go ahead and add to that that she personally has established uh, scholarships for students to be able to experience the world outside of Oklahoma. So she's very much a, a philanthropist as well. And then I'll end the intro. If Kathy's not on some kind of worldwide adventure, you're actually going to find her camping somewhere in Oklahoma with her husband, Shay, and a favorite niece or nephew. So let's please welcome Dr. Kathy Siebold. Wow, thank you. Um, need him follow me around, saying that all the time. That, that was great. Thank you so much, uh, uh, much more than I expected. Um, thank you so much for allowing me to be here today to talk with you about, um, as Mark said, some things that are really, really close to my heart, things I really care about, an agency that I really uh, care about. And most importantly, an agency that represents something that um, I wish as, as a kid who struggled uh, through high school, um, I had um, some support uh, from community members just like you. The Rotary is such a great example of how you actually get involved in the community, not just live in a community, but become a part of the community. And um, I thank you for that and all of the kids that you touch every day in those classrooms that you're trying to reach, um, I know they thank you as well. So let's get started with a little bit about Impact Tulsa. Impact Tulsa is an organization that is in support of schools. So we're not an organization that actually provides um, um, academic instruction. What we do is help to organize around education. Because as we know, kids walk into the classroom every day and they have a lot of issues sometimes, a lot of struggles, a lot of barriers um, to their education, and they're not just in instruction. They are in all of these other areas as well. Social supports are just as important to um, the education of our, of our youth as academic instruction. So we work a lot in that area. Um, we are data nerds, so we take pride in 
collecting data to see what is actually helping. Because when we see that kid come into the classroom and they have some barriers to education and we test an intervention, say we provide them with something, we want to know, did that intervention work or not? Was that the thing that helped that kid get over the finish line and graduate from high school or move on to the next um, level of their education? And if we're not collecting data around that, it's really hard to tell. So Impact Tulsa got started with a group of people who were interested in that question. And some of them included uh, community members just like you and the United Way and some other funders in the community as well as the Tulsa Regional Chamber, we all started talking about, one, how can we start figuring out how to find the best practices that work for our kids? Because the practices that work for kids in Texas might not be the same practices that work for our kids in Tulsa. How do we do that? And we know that if, if kids come in to the education system with a variety of barriers, then we know that we have to work with a variety of people in the community to help them and to help them achieve and to help us all achieve as a community. So we brought this cross sector of people together and we started to think about what we could do. We started visiting locations across the country to see what was happening. We had heard that Cincinnati were, was doing all of these great things. We had heard that they were doing some great things in DC. Let's go there and find out what they were doing. And what we found, along at the same time that uh, United Way uh, Worldwide was finding the same kind of thing, that this idea of collective impact was really important. That I could, as a health agency, for example, help my community and help students to a certain level. And I, as a provider of shelter, maybe, for homeless families can help that kid to a certain level as well. But what if I started to stack those things? What if I really dug in and found out all of the things that, that a student needs? And we started to stack the resources around that so that we can move that um, and improve and help that child in a much quicker way in a much more comprehensive way as well. And not only that, it's helping our schools. Because our schools are not the sole responsible person or entity for the education of our youth, though sometimes it seems like that. Sometimes it seems like we expect that, but we're all responsible for it. So what we decided to do was really dive into this collective impact, and we found a, an organization called Strive Together. Strive Together was doing collective impact work across the community, and that's how Impact also got started. I'm happy to say that a lot of those same supporters that founded Impact Tulsa are still a very, very um, invested and engaged part of the organization. So what we believe is nothing improves, or we don't know it's improving, it probably is, but we want to know it's improving, we have to start measuring things. But guess what? If I go in as an organization and I start measuring things and I start beating people over the head with that and saying, you're doing this wrong, it's not going to be very effective. They're not going to want to see me coming, for sure. So we have a motto. Strive Together has a motto. Let's use data as a flashlight. Let's not use it as a hammer. Let's get that data and say, what's happening? What interventions can we provide? And by the way, is that getting better or not? That's what will make us all start to move forward together. So that's our motto. We measure what matters. When we find something that works, we work really hard to let other people know, hey, this is working over in South Tulsa. Let's try it over here, too. And then when we find something that works and we want to scale it, we go out and find the partners that can help us scale that. Because there are partners all over the city and they work in various um, parts of the city. Let's align them toward these things that we know are working. Scaling it up is what we call that. Because when we want an educated citizen 
to help support our own community going forward, we know we all have to help the schools and we have to help the students. So we work with a variety of partners all over the city. So I'm gonna go through really quickly just what does it mean to measure what matters and how do we do it? What does it mean to actually align resources? How do we do it? And more importantly, how can you get involved? So measuring what matters. We put out a community report and there are some on your tables. Um, we put out a community report each year to show just where are we in the landscape of education uh, nationally and really how are we doing in the region? Like where, where are the schools that are really um, have high academic achievement? We're the ones that need a little improvement in certain areas. Most importantly, where are the bright spots so we can scale things up? This is the, the front of our latest uh, impact report. And what the main theme that we found, we've been doing community impact reports for the past three years, and this is not gonna be new to you at all. It's certainly not new to educators, but equity matters. Um, we are finding, just like the nation finds, that, that we have some equity issues right here in our own community. And they come out very glaringly as we look at the data. So I'm going to run through just quickly and make the point that equity is a, a thread that runs through all of our numbers. This is kindergarten readiness. 57% of kids coming into kindergarten are considered ready to learn how to read. Um, but if you look at that, wow, uh, the little crayons represent uh, the numbers. So the top one, 67% of white kids come in ready to learn to read. But look at the bottom. Hispanic students, only 38%. That's a huge gap. What do we do about that? How do we find out what works to improve that? This is third grade reading, same picture. This is actually three years of data. It's the first time in this community that we've had three consecutive years of data that we can show trends, that we can say over time we're actually improving. And though our overall number for third grade reading has not improved as a total population for the entire county, there are bright spots out there. There are schools that are improving third grade reading for Hispanic students. We have those numbers. So we're, we're actively digging in right now to see what they're doing and how we can expand it someplace else. But again, top. Um, 600 is considered on uh, grade level reading for a Lexile score, um, and our white students are at 637. If you look all the way down, it just keeps going down and down. So there's a big equity there, equity gap there. And it's not only with race and ethnicity, it's actually with income. Income turns out to be a huge predictor um, of academic achievement. These are math scores, same thing. I won't go over um, those, but a math scores in seventh grade, this 52%, the number of um, low-income students who are not on level in seventh grade for math. Graduation, um, same thing. Bright spots are all over this, though. Uh, we have um, African-American students, um, their graduation completion numbers rose by uh, 9% last year, that's huge. And there are other bright spots as well. Here's where we are today. We've been tracking the numbers of graduation completion, third grade, kindergarten readiness, and we started last year to, to start looking at not only our kids graduating, but our kids ready for the next step. And when you think about it, that, that's the important piece. Certainly, we should celebrate always the number of kids who walk across that stage because we know, and we've been there, we know how incredibly difficult that is and life happens and, and, and you, you struggle through high school and you, and you get finished and you should celebrate that um, and everybody should in the community. But are we ready for the next step? This turns out to be an area that we really need to work on. These are ACT scores. Um, this is an ACT exam that was given to all 11th graders in Tulsa County last year. Um, the 26% nationally, students who graduate from high school and take the ACT, nationally only 26% of them are actually considered ready 
for college based on ACT requirements, benchmarks. Uh, the middle number is Oklahoma, so 21%. And Tulsa County, 17. So we got a ways to go there. We got to figure it out. We got to figure out what's happening. Um, this actually was the first time that all 11th graders took this test, so we actually expect some of those numbers just to go up from awareness. Um, but we also know that uh, superintendents and others are working on this right now. And it'll be interesting to follow over the next several years. Once a student actually graduates from um, high school, going into college is a bright spot for Tulsa County. These numbers are going up and up. So the number of kids that we're actually getting into the pipeline of, of higher education is increasing in this area. And that is good news. The thing that we need to start working on and looking at is persistence. So I've worked in higher ed for years, and we know that uh, persistence, getting kids in the door is one thing, persistence is another. A lot of great things happening around this area. Tulsa Community um, College is actually has a pathways program that I think is, is funded by the Gates Foundation. Um, and they are um, implementing a lot of new um, efforts toward keeping those kids in class, getting them graduated. So we're continuing to track that. We have a partnership with the National Student Clearinghouse, which we, allows us to follow kids from high school on to post-secondary education. So we actually know, well, where are the kids going? Are they going in-state? Are they going out-of-state? Uh, where do they end up? So we'll be continuing to, to track that over time, and we'll have some new numbers in our new community impact report, which will be released in, in the spring. So that's what we track. And then how we use that data is what makes a difference. So you can track things all day long, but until we make something change via looking at those numbers, we really haven't done our job. We don't feel like we've done our job as Impact Tulsa. So the real part of the work that we love to do and that we get really excited about is I'm gonna look at that number and I'm going to figure out what we can do to move that number forward. And we celebrate like crazy when we move that number forward. So last year, one of the things that we discovered was um, kids who, and this is in the national research actually, kids who go to pre-K are more ready to read, learn to read, than kids who don't. So simple thing. We mobilize the community to say, how can we get more kids in pre-K? Last year, we were able to raise uh, pre-K enrollment by 4%. Simply by looking at the numbers, we had to target some things. We had to figure out, like, who are the kids not enrolling? What do they look like? You know, what are their characteristics? This is just a chart that we use to do that, and we share this with um, our partners. So this is um, all of the different um, kindergarten cl uh, classes throughout the, throughout the county. And across the bottom is um, economically disadvantaged, and across the other, the other um, axis is kindergarten readiness. So we know we have a clump of schools over here where a lot of the kids are not ready, when they enter kindergarten. We have to figure out where those are and then start going to those communities. This is an example of something that we run and we share with partners as well. So we wanted to say like, where are those kids not enrolling and what zip codes are they and can we put some efforts toward um, helping parents understand how important pre-K enrollment is? And that's what we do. So the, the red on this um, slide are the kids who are not enrolling in um, pre-K who are economically disadvantaged. So we know those are our target, targets for improvement. So we do a lot of mobilizing in those areas to improve the numbers, and that's how we raise by 4%. Fast for completion, my good friend Alex right here in front, um, she runs this program and really, really does a great job. Um, we know, too, from research and from the data that we've collected in Tulsa that kids who fill out FAFSA, which is the federal aid student, um, where kids get federal aid to actually go to college, if they simply fill it out and don't do anything else, no other interventions, they're 30% more likely to go on to post-secondary education. 
So we mobilize around that. Alex mobilizes around that. I'm not even going to take credit. And last year, she and her team and community members just like you raised the FAFSA completion rate in the entire county by 12%. That's incredible, never been done before on such a scale. We're really proud of that, and we're just starting because we're getting ready to kick it off again. Uh, kids, kids can start enrolling in October, so we're working on that. How do we do it? The same thing. We started looking at um, where the dots are. I can't, couldn't see that. These are high schools. Same uh, metrics that we do for kindergarten readiness. Like, where are the schools who are struggling? Then we do something really great. Not we, Alex. Alex and her team go out and they actually teach counselors how to use data. So they teach them first, how do you access FAFSA completion rates? Then how do you do some interventions and then start tracking how many kids are completing FAFSA? So they have things like FAFSA nights and they write down how many kids have filled out FAFSA to this date. Then they have a couple of FAFSA completion nights, and then they write down how many kids have filled out FAFSA, and they track it over time. This is a run chart. We just simply teach counselors how to use it. That's what makes a change. That's how you use data to increase um, academic achievement. This is just an a example of us celebrating and showing how much we went up that blue line. So, that's what we do. We're really proud of what we do. We want to partner more with organizations like yours, with United Way, uh, with the chamber, uh, with the mayor's office. We want to partner with as many people as we can to mobilize around these numbers and really make improvement and then have the numbers to say, we're celebrating this. Um, over the next couple of years, we're really focusing in on these areas. One, early learning. We know early learning is important to the entire, um, the entire uh, trajectory of a kid's education. If we can start off in, in a very, very um, high achievement place that follows a kid all the way through, if a, if a student is underachieving early, it typically stays that way throughout the whole, um, their whole education career. Post-secondary entry going back to FASVA, going to do a couple of more things to increase the number of kids that actually go on to post-secondary, and then capacity building. We're really going to go out like Alex does, and we're going to say, this is how you use data. Here it is, and then this is how you use it to improve. So I thank you so much today for allowing me to come here and um, share Impact Tulsa with you, and um, would love to continue conversations with you over time to see how we can partner. Thank you, Kathy. We, uh, we appreciate your passion for the students, first of all. And as a data nerd, I really appreciate what you're doing with data. I mean, I'm a big believer in if you measure it, you'll, uh, you'll get improvements. So, so good for you for doing that. And we appreciate the collaboration. I've heard Mark speak passionately about we got to get better at collaborating. And uh, he's absolutely right. And it sounds like you're doing just that. So thank you very much. Thank you very much. So our adopted school is Celia Clinton up on North Harvard. And in lieu of a speaker's gift, we donate a book to their library. And this week's book is one I'm going to read before we donate it, because that's intriguing. The Legend of Rock, Paper, and Scissors. Hmm? Who knew there was a legend? Just thought it was a thing. So, so we'll get you to jot a little note in there, and then we'll donate that to the school, to the library there. OK, upcoming programs. Uh, Mark Pendergrass, Pendergrass, Pendergast, excuse me, of the High End Heritage Auction House of Dallas will share how large auction houses work, how to price your own treasures, and stories of how unexpected values from treasures found in attics have changed lives. That just sounds intriguing to me too. Yeah. So that's next week, and then. And then the week after that is uh, Judy Brigham, our district governor. And again, she'll be here to tell us about what's her, her vision for the district this year. And again, the, day, the evening before, we'll have the opportunity to tell her what we're doing in our club. So again, I hope you'll 
put uh, September 12th in the evening on your calendars and, and uh, bring a guest. Bring a guest to those two meetings, okay? Everyone bring one. So now I encourage you to go out, tell your Rotary story, and don't forget to bring a friend to Rotary next week. Thank you.